You are 42. We've actually taken your visual system down to a performance level of say 37. If we can hold that at 37, that's great. None of us live forever. Aging and illnesses are seen as inescapable facts. As cells in our body malfunction and die over the passage of time. But this may not be inevitable. Scientists in the ageing field have started to look at the role of mitochondria, the battery pack of every living cell. Perhaps these tiny entities could hold the secret to keeping us healthier for longer. So I've come to UCL to find out how the energy levels in cells of the retina can be boosted using a specific type of wavelength of light. Ah, so this is where you keep your flies. It is. Professor Jeffrey studies mitochondria using fruit flies. So what are you hoping to learn from all the experiments you're doing on flies? The mitochondria in a fly is almost the same as the mitochondria in you. And of course, we can do experiments on thousands of flies. What exactly are mitochondria? Mitochondria are, they regulate your metabolism, they tell you when to die, they are incredibly powerful entities, uh, but they also can control the pace of ageing. I like to talk about it as a battery in a cell. You've got less energy when the battery runs down. And Professor Jeffrey's research shows that the batteries in these flies are recharged by exposure to red light. It looks as if it's deep red through to the infrared that we can't see. Those are the wavelengths that actually they either absorb or something that they're talking to absorbs and that switches on the recharge on the battery. Mitochondria exist in most complex life forms and have their own separate DNA. They're thought to have originally been free bacteria until around two billion years ago when they were engulfed by a single-celled organism with which they formed a symbiotic or mutually beneficial relationship. A molecule in the inner membrane, adenosine triphosphate or ATP, stores energy in the form of chemical bonds which can be opened by the cell, releasing electrons that are then used to power other cellular reactions. Cells which have a high energy demand, in particular the heart, the brain and the retina of the eye, have more mitochondria. The studies Professor Jeffrey and his team have done on flies have produced extraordinary data. So what have you learned so far? First thing that we've actually shown is not only do we improve the metabolism of the fly, but also the flies live longer. They're much healthier in old age. And some of the experiments we've done actually show that they're cognitively better. They remember things that they wouldn't remember without the red light. And partly that's because the central nervous system uses vast amounts of energy. And as we get older, the energy's not there. So it's not surprising we get a, quite a general widespread effect. They walk better, they fly better. I mean, when I first saw it, didn't believe the data the first time around. We did it three or four times and the story remained the same. It sounds like a miracle, and that's partly the problem. If you don't have a mechanism that you can understand, the problem people think is, this is just magic crystals. You know, this isn't real. So we invested probably four years in trying to find out what the red light was doing to metabolism and energy for the organism as it aged. And then we switched into impact. Having reproduced the data on mice, Professor Jeffrey is now studying the impact of red light on humans, starting with the human eye. Why are you focusing just on the retina? The retina ages faster than any other part of your body, okay? It's got more mitochondria than any part of your body. I can test it very, very carefully. I can shine a light and I can say, can you see this any better? How much better can you see it? I can test it. For the study, 24 people aged between 28 and 72 who had no eye disease were recruited to test the effect that long wavelength light has on their eyes. Zan is one of the volunteers. So Zan, you've been using this torch for 14 days. Yeah. How's it been? So it's all right, actually. I quite like it. Not that comfortable on my eye. 
So I do like that and I keep my eye closed mostly. Um, but it feels like sort of that sunlight through curtains kind of feeling. It's kind of nice. I like it. Zan has been asked to shine a specially modified torch, which emits long wavelength red light, into her left eye for three minutes every morning. Professor Jeffrey's tests on flies show that mitochondria are responsive to this light at very specific times of the day. Why did you decide to get involved in such a study? Just the last year, actually, just suddenly my eyesight has noticeably become different. My, my focus range is less. I've had my eyes tested a couple of times and I don't need glasses or anything, but it's just, you know, I'm, it's not as good, my eyesight. And yeah, it can make a difference, the red light thing, so I thought I'd give it a try. So today's the day, you're going to get your results. It's exciting, How yeah. do you think you're going to do? I'd feel really bad if I didn't do as well in the second test. <laughs> I feel like it was a bit of a waste of time. So yeah, fingers crossed. Okay, Zan, if you want to come and take a seat, just there. Thank you. To find out if the red light has made a difference, Professor Jeffrey's team are testing Zan's eyes for a second time. I'll give you a patch for one of your eyes and just pop it over and just shout out what letter you see. If you don't know, just say don't know. Okay. Okay, lovely. Ready to go? Yeah. And next one here. Here we go. Anything there do you feel? Tea. The test is designed to measure her ability to see in low light and also distinguish subtle differences between the colours red and blue, which she does by attempting to read increasingly blurred letters. X. Good, and this will be the last one. Professor Jeffrey is hoping the project will show the value of red light as a simple intervention to improve eyesight in old age. V. Perfect, and you can rest there. Nick Lane is an evolutionary biologist and science Booker Prize author with an expertise on mitochondria. So what's your opinion then on using longer wavelength light to charge up the mitochondria? Well, you're not exactly charging the mitochondria, but you are affecting their function. So with the eye, that's the ideal place because you've got absolute straight passage through of light and so you can, if you like, maximise the impact there. Other regions of the brain are, are a little bit more problematic, but it will certainly have an effect. And uh, there is some evidence in depression as well, for example, that this is one of the reasons why we get less depressed in the summer than we do in the winter. It's just the amount of light and some of it gets, gets through and penetrates into the brain. If it's so significant, why is medical research not focused on trying to fix mitochondria or just make them better? We tend to think in biology now, mostly in terms of information. Most medical research has taken, if you like, a gene-centric view. And in the nucleus of our cells, we have 20,000 genes. Each one encodes a protein, and the protein has a particular function. And then there's regulation behind all of that as well. And we know from the Human Genome Project that, that mutations or different forms of particular genes can increase or decrease your risk of a particular disease. But there's another way of seeing the question, which is about energy flow over time. It's about, you know, we, we're not immobile. We don't just sit here and not move. We need to eat, we need to breathe continuously. And, and this is a continuous flowing of energy through all the cells in our body, all of them simultaneously, and they're interacting with all the genes in the different systems. And the way that this energy flow is interacting with the proteins and the genes in different systems, is that's what's changing our risk of disease. Back at the lab, the results of Zan's eye test are ready. OK, so what we've done is we've looked at your ability to detect the red letters and the blue letters. And this is a measurement of threshold. So going down is good. You've actually improved your ability to be able to see those letters. And that star that we have over this histogram shows that that change is statistically significant. Zan's eyes have improved, a result that's in line with the other participants. So how can I hold on to that improvement? You really can only hold on to that improvement by continuing exposure to these lights, which is maybe once every other day or once every third day. And, and will it just keep on going up? Will my eyes just carry on getting better? I don't think so. You know, you are, I don't know, whatever, you're 42. We've actually taken your visual system down to a performance level of, say, 37. If we can hold that at 37, 
that's great. The study continues, and whilst the technology isn't currently available to buy, Professor Jeffrey sees the technology as being used in two ways. The first direction I want it to move to is I want devices that are basic, simple and cheap that you can take home. For me, I think that would be great because it would mean that perhaps you can watch the telly, if you're 70 or 80, you can watch the telly a little bit longer, uh, read the newspaper a bit better. We're also discussing the issue of light bulbs. Now your old incandescent light bulb had loads of red light in it. But we've all swapped over to either eco bulbs or LEDs. Now the tragic thing about those lights is there's no red light in them. There was loads in your old incandescent light bulb, but there's none in these. And one of the big moves is to say, can we tweak the light bulb to put red in it, give you a burst of red light for three or four minutes? That'd be fantastic. Recharging mitochondria to improve eyesight could be the start of much wider research, as current data indicates that red light could hold the key to affecting a range of age-related conditions that researchers around the world are only just beginning to explore. We are interested in ageing, ameliorating the impact of ageing by moderating mitochondrial function either primarily or secondarily, almost every disease will have an impact on your mitochondria. And if you're over the age of 40, it's something you should be interested in. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.